You guys got me? No. Negative? No. no. Check. One. Check. 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 No. 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 You guys can hear. Oh, hello. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Already got, I got it good, right? All the time. Mighty name of Jesus, right? Amen. The name above all names. Hallelujah. The name that trumps every name. Glory to God. You know, I don't think believers have a big enough revelation of the power that's in the name. Amen. 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 Yep. Glory to God. God is so, so good. All the time. All the time. All right. Where are we here? Lost my papers. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you feel the presence of the Lord? Yes. Can you? Yes. It should be tangible to us, right? Yes. As believers, it should be tangible. You know, the only thing that stops that from happening in our lives is us. Right. right? We yep. are not aware. Yep. Right? Once we got saved, the Holy Spirit made residence on the inside of us. Yeah. That Hallelujah. literally put God's address on the inside of you. Yeah. And what do we do? We just get our minds clouded. Right? We get so caught up in the things that, hey, look, I am 1,000% guilty of doing that myself. We get focused on everything but God in the middle of our days. Amen. You know, maybe in the morning we get up and read. We do read our devotions. We read the Word of God. And then as soon as that's done, here comes the world slamming you in the head. But we should be more cognizant and aware of God during those times rather than aware of what's going on around us. And what's coming against us, right? He overcame the world. What does that make us? If we're joint heirs with Christ, that makes us Overcome. overcomers. Amen. Are we just conquerors? No. Or are we more than conquerors? Amen. 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 Glory to God. That's good news. But it depends on us. It depends on what we do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
with our giving, or our song, let's do it with our giving. envelope just raise your hand and the ushers will get it to you if you're giving online there's a couple ways to do it you could text your offering to 732-479-8787 right that'll be is that going to be the For same now. number okay we will we'll be changing that soon but not today uh 732-479-8787 text and it'll prompt you all the things to do for that put your credit card in there it's safe um, or you can go online to our church website, www.abundantgracechurch.com. Go to the Giving tab, click on that, and that'll show you what to do. Or you can send a check in the mail to Abundant Grace Church, 108 Indian Head Road. I was going to say AbundantGraceChurch.com. <laughs> you go there, too. It just goes naturally, right? <laughs> Abundant Grace Church, 108 Indian Head Road, Tom's River, New Jersey, 08753. Amen? Amen? Are we ready to give? Amen. Amen. All right. Hold up your offerings. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you with a grateful heart, Father. We love you. We thank you for loving us, for your mercy, for your grace, for your faithfulness. Father, we're giving our tithes and our offering to you, Father, because we love you and we trust you, Father. You have given us so much, Lord, mm -hmm. and we thank you, Father, that we honor you right now with our tithes and offerings. Receive it now, Father, to yourself. We thank you for it. But we know, Lord, what your word says about giving. And we thank you, Father, that it shall come back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And we thank you for it in advance, Father. We thank you that all the needs of the church are met. We thank you, Father, that the church is debt-free. We thank you that we're debt-free. And all of our needs are met. All the time, we never lack, we never run out. We thank you, Father, you are so good to us. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We may collect the offering. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. You guys, you guys awake tonight? Yeah. Should be happy to be here. Just kept on. Yes. Yes. So I wasn't so happy when I walked through the door, if you want to know the truth. But, like, Paul, I thought myself happy. Amen? Yes. If you have your Bibles, turn over to Ephesians chapter 6. Guess where we are? Now going on however many months, but I promise you, um, I'm going to make a promise. I'm going to keep my promise. I'm going to endeavor to keep my promise. We will wrap this up next week. So, we're just about there. But, um, Ephesians, oh, I heard it on. Well, well, we'll go somewhere else. That's a guarantee. Um, Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, we were, we've been looking at verse 18. Let's read it. Um, prayer, oh, this is obviously the Apostle Paul. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be here this evening. We come to you as touching this service asking you for the anointing the anointing that is on your word to break every yoke of bondage to set the captives free to set our minds free lord as we renew our mind tonight to your word and that with that people have come with ready ears to hear your word we know faith comes by hearing and hearing your word and only your word mm -hmm. and as we do so as we feed on it your word taste says taste it and see as we taste this word of god we will see results when we put it into practice in our lives. And we thank you for meeting each and every one of us exactly at our point of need this evening. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen and amen. So what we were looking at is, obviously we, we spent months in chapter Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, and a lot of time looking at the different pieces of the armor that Paul was talking about in Ephesians chapter 6. But there was that hidden piece of armor, that this is where we are now, 
called the Lance of Prayer. And just to summarize a little bit, we kind of looked at the fact that there was various kinds of prayer. Specifically, most Bible scholars will agree that there's six different types of prayer. When Paul was looking at the Roman soldiers, the Roman soldiers didn't just carry one type of lance either. They carried multiple types of lances for different reasons for combat. Remember, the armor of God is all about spiritual warfare. And for one second, if you don't think prayer is part of spiritual warfare, it's time to start thinking along those lines. Because when we pray, I'm getting a little ahead of what we're going to be talking about in this couple specific forms of prayer tonight. But when we pray, we are knocking the snot out of the enemy. As long as we believe, we receive. And that we pray according to something. And I'm not going to tip off where we're going to go tonight. But we need to be praying according to something. Remember I said that. Okay, so the six types of prayer most Bible scholars agree on are the prayer of consecration, consecration and the prayer of petition, the prayer of authority or the prayer of faith, the prayer of thanksgiving, the prayer of supplication, and the prayer of intercession. And we looked at two le uh, week before last, because I wasn't here last Wednesday because of our granddaughter's graduation, but the prayer of consecration, without getting into reading the scripture, we use the illustration of, or the scripture to back that up, of uh, Hannah and Samuel, right? Her presenting and making a vow to the Lord that if the Lord would do something on her behalf, she would dedicate something to the Lord. Now, would that have happened? Meaning, would she have seen the results of what she prayed if she didn't believe God that he could do it? So was she praying also a prayer of faith? Yes. Every type of prayer requires faith behind it. Right? Otherwise, we're praying what? A foxhole prayer. You know, when me and Jody ran the Celebrate Recovery Ministry for all those years, most people that were embroiled in any of what we called hurts, habits, or hang-ups constantly prayed foxhole prayers. Lord, if you just get me through this, I'll go to church every Sunday. And I used to say, thank you. It's a foxhole prayer. It's an emergency. It's not a faith prayer. It's if you do, if you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. That's not, the, that's not really God's kind of love. That's phileo love when I want to get into the love. It's not, um, it's not the uh, unconditional love, agape love of God. Right? You're not really praying a prayer in faith. You're basically wishing and hoping. Right? But we looked at the prayer of consecration, like I said, was Samuel being born through his mother's prayer that she would dedicate him to the Lord, which came with a sacrifice on her part. Because to dedicate him to the Lord meant he was going to be hanging out doing what he was supposed to be doing. She wasn't going to see much of him. He was going to be in the temple serving God. And was Samuel pretty important in the Word of God? Yes. Amen. Yeah, I think. And then we looked at the prayer petition, right? And we, uh, Bonnie, put up there Philippians chapter 4, verse, starting verse 6. If you could, I didn't have it in here. I just realized. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. That word supplication in the Greek means petition. With thanksgiving, remember that too as well. Thanksgiving. Right? Because that's something we're going to be looking at tonight. Let your request be made known to God. So a prayer petition is making a request known to, to God. I, I gave the illustration of me and Jody years ago writing out a prayer petition for the needs that we have, specific needs. But do you know that many of the prayers can overlap? You can pray a prayer of petition and also a prayer that we're going to start off looking at tonight is a prayer of authority. A prayer of petition better be a prayer of authority. Do we really understand the authority that's been given to us? I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I don't. Do I know, do I know it on the inside? I do. Do I put it into practice every day? No. What do I mean by that? I alluded it to it during praise and worship. We get busy. We let all these other voices in the world 
come into our head. We let symptoms in our body come into our head. But do we have authority over all those things? Do we have authority over anything that tries to come against us? Yes. Do we have authority over symptoms in our body, sickness, illness, and disease? But when the things are coming hard and our mind's getting cluttered with lies, deception, right? The thoughts that enter, where do you think they're coming from? To get you what? Folk unfocused or off of the focus of the authority we have. Because I gotta be honest with you, to fight the good fight of faith is the fight to stay in faith. Yes. Yes. And sometimes, man, it's hard. Uh, okay. When all these things are coming at you simultaneously. And I believe, and I've been saying this for months, not even just by going through what I went through, but I know probably what, without knowing that you guys are all going through not probably one thing, probably multiple things at once. The enemy is trying to open up multiple fronts to come against you because if that second or third front comes into place, you're like, how can I overcome this? Mm -hmm. You don't have to. No. It's already been overcome. But if we don't think about it in the lines of, or under the guise of, <coughs> excuse me, the authority we have, what good are we? We have to know the authority we have. Who we are in Christ. What belongs to us in Christ. Because there's things that belong to us yes. in Christ. So the prayer of authority. Turn your Bibles over to John chapter 15. And we're going to start looking at this. And a prayer of authority is a prayer of you knowing what belongs to you. <coughs> Just strain my voice. Yelling. Look. <coughs> That's my wife shakes her head. <coughs> Alright, you guys there? John chapter 15, let's start in verse 7. Or let's read just verse 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Amen. Remember, we're talking about a prayer of authority. That phrase you will ask, is the Greek word ateo, which primarily has to do with tangible needs, such as food, shelter, money, etc. Okay? Some of the other prayers have to do with spiritual needs. We haven't really talked about it yet, but like a prayer of intercession for somebody else usually has to do with a spiritual need. But a prayer of authority typically has to do with a tangible need. You need something. And it's based on that word, ateo, that we just read in John chapter 15, verse 7. My, my, uh, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask. Well, what are we asking? Question mark. Hang on. And what winds up happening... Well, let, let's look a little deeper at this word. This word ateo also means to ask or demand or to call for something. And that's what I said the prayer of authority is based on. And believers get really wacky when it comes to that. What are you saying? I am supposed to demand something from God? Yeah. And when we think about it in the context of prayer, right, it seems to go against what many believers think. And believers specifically that don't know the authority they have. They come to God with the either like false humility or begging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. False humility. Oh Lord, I know I'm not worthy. But have you ever heard a Christian pray like that? Mm -hmm. yeah. I grew up denominational. Right? I know many of you did a well as well. That's pretty much what we heard all the time. If I'm only, I know I'm not worthy, but if you say the word, he's already said the word. And you guys probably know where I was going with that. I'm not going to go any further because we shouldn't get all caught up in what we disagree with. But I'm just giving you an example of we can come to God with a demand. Yet it goes against 
what many Christians believe how they should approach, approach God. I'm not going to demand anything from God. I can't, I can't do that. Well, if I have scripture to back that up, can we change our thinking along those lines? Yes. Not only should we, we need to, without asking God, in false humility, coming him to like this lowly, beaten, you know, defeated person. Because right. if we're in Christ, do we already have the victory? Yes. yes. Why would there be a reason to come to God lowly and defeated? Really? Amen. There shouldn't be, ever. Do we all get there and feel that way sometimes? You know, I, I forget where I heard this, who, whoever it was, but, you know, the only party you're invited to that you'll always show up to is the pity party you throw. Yeah. <laughs> you, we always RSVP for our own pretty, our pity party. We're the first ones. We're, yeah, well, yeah, because we, 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 you know, we are, uh, we send out the invitation to ourselves, basically. We're the guest of honor. We're the guest of honor, exactly, at our own pity party. Do you think for one second that anybody in ministry, in the five-fold ministry, just because you have a label, and again, you guys know our thinking along these lines, pastor is nothing more than a job title. Mm -hmm. That's right. Does that mean I'm, in, I'm oh, Pastor Frank will never throw a pity party. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Want to bet? I had one today for a little bit. I took a nap. <laughs> a little bit. You see what I'm saying? And again, designed by because what? How, how, why do we throw that pity party? Because we start entertaining our thoughts and our feelings, which are lies. You know, our negative thoughts and feelings, and we entertain them, and it's like, woe's me. I'm preaching myself, just so you guys know, right? But yet, coming to God, demanding something is or to call for something goes against what many believers think how they should approach God right but the prayer of authority is totally opposite of that approach of coming you know with false humility and lowly be that same word that we just looked at that Greek word also denotes someone who comes to God authoritatively look it up you guys got a concordance get the get the app look it up online, whatever, authoritatively, almost demanding something from God yeah. with confidence that they know what they need and aren't afraid to receive it. Amen. Do you know there's believers out there afraid to ask God for what they need because they're afraid they might receive it? Yeah. <laughs> Lord, wait, I'll, give you, I'll, give you, I'll give you a perfect example of that. Lord, my heart's desire is to show you Show me in an area of ministry you'd want me to show you, but I really don't want to do that because I'm afraid to do it. In on the inside, right. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You guys kind of know what I'm talking about, right? Lord, open this door of opportunity to help me restore a relationship that's been torn apart, mm. but I really don't want to because it's uncomfortable to reach out to somebody and call them. Amen. Mm. Yep. I forget what we were watching last night. We were watching something on TV. And it was about reconciliation. Oh, we were watching Heartland. I don't want to tell you the story. I'm not going to give you the word. We're watching the new season of Heartland. And uh, one of the seasons was there was, a, and this has nothing to do, this is going to give away for you guys that haven't seen it yet. Um, a relationship between a father and son was torn apart. And the one person said to the person whose relationship was torn apart, you know, as time goes by, the easier it gets to not make that phone call. Yeah, so true. You just keep pushing it off, pushing it off, and pushing it off. And the longer you push it off, now the harder it is to actually make that reconciled yes. phone call. Right. But we could pray a prayer, but do we really want to receive the answer to that? Because right. do you think God will be like, no, nah, forget about it, don't reconcile? Is God a God of forgiveness? Yes. If it isn't somebody that's continually done you personal harm or injury, God's going to want to say, yeah, you need to probably go forgive your brother or sister and make it right. I can't tell you, growing up in an Italian family, how many people we didn't talk to anymore. And I asked my mom and dad, like, why don't we talk to so-and-so? I don't know. I don't remember. Wow, it must have been really important if you don't remember. Well, was it over they cheated at a card game? I mean, what? They took the last piece of scongeal on the plate? Like, what happened? You know what I mean? It's, it's so petty sometimes. I'm not denying the fact that it can't be bigger. But so often, it's such petty things. 
But in a prayer of authority, we have to not be afraid to receive the answer to our prayer. And again, I said many Christians are disturbed by the notion of demanding something for God. However, when we look a little closer on the verse we just read, right, our, 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 our foundational verse of Scripture there, the word abide is used twice in that verse. Do we need to go back and read it? Can you put it up there, Bonnie? Oh, you got it. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Amen. It's used twice in the verse. Mm -hmm. When we take a closer look at the word abide, it's taken from a Greek word meno, which means to stay, to dwell, to lodge, to remain, to indwell, to continue, to remain a constant union. Now, if we look at that first Greek word and we add this to the right, we can expand on this verse of scripture based on the Greek. So if we did that, it would read this way. Remember, we're talking about the prayer of authority. Here's how it would read. If you permanently and habitually lodge, dwell, abide, and remain continually in me, and my words permanently and habitually lodge, dwell, abide, and remain continually in you, you will be able to strongly ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Amen. But what's the key? The key is we've got to know the will of God for our lives in order to pray His will. And the only way to pray His will is by knowing His Word. Because when we are praying His will, we're praying His Word. As I was putting together some notes this morning, that's what the Lord dropped in my heart. And I want to read it again because it was like simple, but yet missed by so many believers. The key is we must know the will of God in order to pray his will. And the only way to pray his will is by knowing his word. Because when we are praying his will, we are praying his word. Yes. Amen. Yes. Do you think God has a problem with you putting him in remembrance of his word? No, he tells you that. He tells us that. Why? Because what does that show God? When you pray that prayer, remember, what do we say have to be behind any prayer? Faith. Faith. Now, we pray a prayer of authority. We're putting God in his remembrance of his word, showing him that we know his word. That's right. Amen. And we're asking according to his will, which is his word. Right. So we need to pray according to the word. The most the prayers you're not going to have answered are words that are or prayers that are not according to the will of God. Right. I think we talked about this in the last couple of weeks. There was crazy times when Christians were, you know, when we were labeled a name and claim a bunch, right? Well, I named so and so's wife to be mine. What are you nuts? You're not going to get that prayer answered, dude. That ain't going to happen. A, it's not according to the will of because God loves people to break up, right, and divorce them. No. That's not God's will, because it's not in His Word. Pray the Word. But in order to pray the Word, we need to know the Word. We looked at last week, or two weeks ago, the prayer of petition. The prayer of petition should be what? Brought to God with His Word attached to it. You know, if you're dealing with sick, let me give an example. If, you know, again, you know, prayer can get... <coughs> Sometimes people just honestly just don't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. And I get caught up in it sometimes, you know. But let me give you an example of a prayer of authority. Again, agreeing with God's will. And if you're dealing with sickness and illness and disease, Lord, I thank you. And maybe you've never prayed for Maybe it's something that just happened. A headache tried to come on you. Lord, I don't deny symptoms of my body. But I know that this headache has no legal right to stand or come against me. I know Satan is the author of sickness, illness, and disease. And I bind up that headache and I shut it down. And according to what your word says, by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. Because the book of Matthew says Jesus took my infirmities to the cross and bore my sickness. And by his stripes I'm healed. Amen. I take it and I receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Is that a need you have? You need that headache to go away. Yes. But should be like, Lord, if you could, <laughs> could you just, if it be like, that, that cracks me up. If it be thy will. Yes. 
us. It is his will. Because the word said it was his will. If it be your will, can you get rid of this headache for me? Please, 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 please. <laughs> is that contradictory to this verse of scripture I want to read that backs up everything we talked about, which is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come meekly to the throne of grace. Is that what it says? Wim wimply to the throne of grace? No. Come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. What did we say the prayer of authority was for? When we have a tangible need. So if we have a tangible need, how should we pray? Boldly. According to what? Word. The word. We overcomplicate it. Because mm -hmm. so often we pray what we think we need. <coughs> Lord, I need a million dollars to come down from... And even if you pray it kind of sounding like the word of God... Lord, I charge of ministering the angels to go forth and bring in that million dollars that's in the world system right now because I need it and I want it. Here's a question for you. Are you ready for it? I've learned some lessons about finances over all these years. What we think we need. Now, I'm not denying having a need. But if you've got, you, you want to pay off your debt, your debt's $5,000. You know, unless you're ready for that million to come in, because you're gonna you've you know been seeking first the kingdom of God, and you're nowhere you're you're gonna sow, and and that heart is right, and you have your money, and your money doesn't have you. And go ahead, but you understand where I'm going. We've got to got to be careful, but we need to pray His will, right? We need to pray His will, and we need to come boldly. <coughs> To the throne of grace. Now we looked at that word ateo again, right? It's also found in 1 John chapter 5. And uh, if you guys can turn over there if you want. If not, it'll be up on the screen. And I want to read verse 14 and 15. Now again, do we need to have scripture to back up anything we're talking about? Yes. You know, the other day I was sitting home. It was like the middle of the day. I took a break. I had lunch. There was nothing going on that I had to deal with. And I was... And I'm not saying this is necessarily a bad thing. I was tempted. I was just kind of, I turned the TV on, I was flicking through the channels. And I went through all the Christian channels. And I was tempted to put something on by somebody I didn't know. And I got an instantaneous check on the inside not to do it. What am I getting at? We have to be so careful what we That's feed right. on. That's right. I can't tell you how many times I've turned Christian television on. And whatever was coming out of somebody's mouth was complete and total bunk. Why? Because it wasn't according to what the Word says. Right. Specifically things like, well, if you sow into my ministry, you're going to receive your healing. Oh, yeah. Okay, where does it say that in the Word of God? Yeah. Last time I checked, it says, hmm, when you sow a seed, it reaps after its own kind. Right. So if I sow a financial seed, how am I going to reap a healing? Yep. You're not. You know, things along those lines. Motivational messages. You know, I turned on a, a long time ago somebody I kind of know through some other people, a minister, and I turned it on, and it went 30, I watched it for about 20 minutes, 20 or 25 minutes, the sermon, his sermon, and there wasn't one scripture. It became a motivational speech. Well, I can go do a TED Talk and motivate you, but motivate me to do what? You, I better be motivating you as a minister based on what the Word of God says, and I love motivational messages based on the Word of God. That get me pumped up and want to do the will of God for my life. Amen. And to see his will closer. But the reality is, we have to be so careful. So I did, I, I just scrolled through the channels, I'm like, can't do it. Now are there people I will watch? Yeah, because I know them. Right. I know them. Right. I know what they believe. I know what they teach, right? So what I told you guys to turn over to John, 1 John chapter 5. Verse 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That word a T-O. If we ask anything according to what? His will. His will. He does what? Hears us. If we, if we ask not according to his will. Can we, can, we, can we ascertain from that verse of scripture? If we ask according to his will, he hears us. What happens if we don't ask according to his will? You won't hear. I got nothing to hear. Right. You're not praying according to my will. 
Verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, this is good news. So if you're praying God's will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we, that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Now, the problem we get ourselves into, uh, I asked you for something, Lord. I came boldly to the throne of grace, but it's just taking way too long. <laughs> Now it's time to look at the next verses type of prayer with that in mind, the prayer of thanksgiving. And there's not a ton here of information that you guys probably don't already know. So turn over to 1 Thessalonians. I said that without slurring. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I want to specifically look at verse 18. In, I'll wait for Bonnie. In some things, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the what? Will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Is it God's will for us to give thanks? Yes. yes. If you've got nothing else going good in your life, can you thank Him for being saved? Yes. 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 Is that the longest part you're ever going to spend in a place? In heaven? That's right. yes. This is the shortest you're ever going to do. Right? In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Give thanks is a phrase. That means when we look at the Greek word, it's the Greek word eucharistio. Meaning to be grateful, to feel thankful, and to give thanks. It, Paul primarily used it in his epistles when he was thanking God for someone, an individual, or a group of people. And let's look at that real quickly. And you guys don't have to turn there for the sake of time. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 16 says, Do not cease to give thanks. That's that word. And again, I encourage you to go home, get your concordance out, and look it up. Eucharisto. For you making mention to you in my prayers. He was praying. This is where Paul starts to pray the Ephesians prayers. He was praying a prayer of thanksgiving for them. The Ephesians prayers, and what we're going to look at next in Colossians chapter 1, verse 3, if you, cut, if you go to Faith and Healing School, you know, Pastor Eddie had been doing this forever, the, praying the Ephesians prayers and the Colossians prayers. Well, their prayers of what? Thanksgiving. And then Paul gets into changing it around, asking for specific things, right? Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. We give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. And then 1 Thessalonians back there again in chapter 1 verse 2 says, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. You know, according to the verses that we just read, is it God's will that we use the prayer of thanksgiving in every part of our life? Yes. Is it important for believers to cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Yes. yes. Bonnie, can you throw Philippians 4, verse 6 back up there again? And then I'm going to ask you to flip over to 7. Be anxious for nothing. Anybody anxious for something in here? Yes. <laughs> yes. Should we be? No. Now, if you, to set it up without going back there, this all starts off with, Paul talking about how God's going to meet your needs. Right. right? So be anxious for nothing, but in everything, yep. bring everything to God. We talked about this two weeks ago. Nothing's too small to bring prayer to God. It's true. Right? Yep. Lord, I, I use the illustration for me. Lord, I have to call this client. Give me the wisdom, give me the knowledge, speak through me, show me what I need to say, what I need to do. Amen. But you do that? 90% of the time, when I, if I don't forget, what? Better. Well, thanks, boss. <laughs> Time's day off tomorrow. <laughs> <I know. laughs> but that's my point. Everything. Everything. Look, if you're putting together... I hate doing furniture. Like Jody, we just bought like a, a, a TV rack. 
right? A TV rack to put together. And I'm like, I'll do it. We, we don't need it right now because we're not going to use it yet. And you must have told somebody about this, didn't you? No. no. And I'm like, we've all been there. Yeah. And I'm like, insert A into B in this bolt J. Oh, yeah. Peters. But if I leave it let sit long enough, she'll do it. Yeah. And she did until she got stuck. And then she needed you. Yeah, she starts things and then needs me in the middle of them. When I specifically don't want to do them, I'll be the first one to admit it. Right? But we can't be that way in our prayer life. we got to be cognizant of always praying for everything. And nothing is too small. Like I said, if you're having trouble, pray about it. Lord, show me how to put this stupid thing together. No, you know what I'm saying? Lord, give me wisdom. Show me. Because some of those instructions make it harder. They do. true. You know, and then they give you that little stupid Allen wrench. If you don't have a good set of tools, don't bother with that little thing you can't turn. You, you know what I'm saying? Because we need to be prayer-minded constantly. And, by like prayer and supplication, and we know that's the word petition, with what? What's the catalyst to activate our prayer? Thanksgiving. Now, when you're praying this, right? You're, you're not anxious. You're, you're praying the prayer of petition. When you're thanking God, do you have it yet? No. Nope. No. But we keep thanking it. But we're thankful yes. that we're not. Get it. Right. 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 right? To do what? Let your requests may be known to God. And if we go back to Hebrews chapter 4 that we just looked at, and we can make our requests how? Boldly. Yeah. Right. Boldly. According, as long as we're praying according to His will. His will. Flip the seven, Bonnie. Because this is the outcome of praying the will of God. 4 7. Philippians 4 7. That's, this is the outcome of praying the will of God with thanksgiving and the peace of God. Amen. Well, I prayed boldly, brought my petition to God with thanksgiving. Now, what happens? The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Go to verse 8, please. And then God tells you, because this I specifically believe in Paul's talking about here. Once we do all that, and I wasn't planning on going here, but the Spirit wants us, the Holy Spirit wants us to go here for some reason. And I know it's for me too, right? We pray a prayer of petition with thanksgiving. The peace of God comes on us, and then what happens? What's that thought? It's like, it's like water. You ever have water in your ear? It's like nagging, right? Like you're trying to shake it out. Well, you can't shake the thought out. But what we can do is what Paul encourages us to do. God tells us specifically through his word what we should focus on. Finally, my brethren, whatever things are true, is that thing whispering in your, your ear that's opposed to the word of God true? <laughs> so what should we focus on? Not that. Nope. Whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Because the thought, we're going to pray a prayer petition with thanksgiving. The peace is going to come over us. And here comes the enemy trying to talk us out of it. Yeah. Yeah. But God tells us in his word what to meditate on. And we can't meditate on what's on the news. Because that's not praiseworthy. It's not just, unless it's a story about puppies. You know what I'm saying? We need more puppy stories. Yes. Um, it's true. There's not a lot of lovely stuff going on out there. There's definitely not a lot of pure stuff going on out there. Yeah. I want to close with this. As we've looked at these couple areas of prayer, you know, the prayer of authority and the prayer of thanksgiving, it's all about knowing God's will for our lives. Mm -hmm. If we never pick up the word, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying this casually, and I don't really mean for you to do this, well, I kind of do. If you don't pick up the word and know what's yours in Christ and don't know the will of God for you, don't pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
You need to get the will. You need to get the word first, right. right? I don't know. I don't know. Growing up, I was never encouraged to read the word. No. In church, we're never. I, never. You know that you guys have heard this comment um, that I told the story, and it goes along those lines because everything about prayer is about knowing God's word, right? And I'll never forget my father-in-law who fought me and Jody tooth and nail on coming here. Just because he was rooted in religion. Mm -hmm. You know, he thought he was going to fry if he walked in here. Mm -hmm. And months and years and... I mean, he thought we were in a call. I mean, I'll just be honest with you. Right? Months and years of hammering. Not hammering, but in love. Conversations. And I, I, I can't tell you how many hours of me talking to him. With the Word of God out. Pop, get your Bible. I'll get my Bible. Let's compare what it says. And let me tell you where I'm coming from. And then finally, he goes to where he was going to church. He asked the minister. You know, my daughter and my son-in-law encouraged me all the time to read the Bible. What do you think? And the response was, I'll tell you what you need to know. Are you going to tell me? Because I don't believe you know the will of God for your life. Because I hear the prayers you guys are praying. He said, what do you want to do that for? What do you want to do that for? And then I'll, I'll tell you what you need to know. Really? Because the prayers you're praying are like, well, if it be your, if it be your will, uh. then you don't know God's will. And I don't want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. But I'll go find it for myself. So, the more our minds are renewed, the more our prayers will be in accordance to his will. You've got to renew our minds. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if you don't know his will and you want to pray, pray in the Spirit. If you're, you know, you're, you're, you're been infilled with the Holy Ghost, pray in the Spirit until you start to know his will. Because as you start to pray in the Spirit, you're going to start to know his will if you're spending time in the Word. Right. Amen? Amen? It's important. It's important. And next week we'll finish up on the, the last two uh, types of prayer, and then we'll move on to something else to follow with. Amen? Glory to God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time again here together. We thank you, Father, that as your word went forth, the Bible tells us it never returns void, Father. And thank you, Father, for, for just giving impartation of truth into our life tonight. Truth that we can take and use it, Father. Because faith without works is dead. We need to put a work behind our faith, Lord. We thank you for it all. We say bring glory to yourself this evening. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank you guys for coming out. You guys as well via live stream. Uh, don't forget tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, the women's meeting. Uh, tomorrow, 1030, Friday, 1030, Faith and Healing School. And Sunday, 10 a.m. for uh, Sunday, regular Sunday service. Also, mark your calendar, September 10th, immediately after church, is the church picnic. So, mark your calendars. It's $15. For adults, killed ki kids. I was gonna, I got caught between kids and children there. Uh, killed children, children, children under uh, twelve or free. So, glory to God. We'll see you guys at another service.